Hello, my name is Esther Jumi Natando. I am a gospel artist, a TV personality, and just a level of God of people. So, Esther, we're in the new year, we just started. Um, but looking back, what did you plan for 2023 that you managed to achieve? Okay, so for 2023, I think the biggest um, plan on the calendar was to release my third album, which I did. It's called Umwala. We launched it on the 8th of April, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> and um, it has done quite well. Um, so right after the, the launch, I had to go on a break. And that was also intentional because we initially found out that we're expecting on the 3rd of January 2023. So it was like, oh, we're starting the year uh, in this uh, new phase. And so even everything to do with work was very you know, calculated and um, we just resorted to me going on a break after the launch. So at least we had the content out. And so I was on that break and then I came back toward the end of the year 2023. Around December, I think I became a little more active musically. Yes. Okay, so you started the new year with a pleasant surprise. Yes. <laughs> um, is there anything that you plan to achieve that you didn't? Is there anything I planned to achieve that I didn't? Honestly, yes. So initially, I really wanted to do a music video whilst pregnant. Um, I just didn't know for what video and ended up not doing anything at all. So that's on, the only thing that I wish I had managed to do. Yeah. And what are your goals for 2024? So 2024, the main thing, of course, is to um, promote the album because in as much as it's, it's doing quite well, uh, we also haven't really, really promoted it like intentionally. So that's what we're, we're focusing on this year. Visuals uh, for particular songs, um, some tours uh, where I can and uh, yes, so mainly around that. And of course, um, Blossom is coming back, yay! A little baby that I started uh, on YouTube something very exciting I've gotten to partner with uh, a particular um, people that will be of great help to that so season two of Blossom is coming so I'm really really excited about that so in a nutshell I think those are the main things apart from the brands that I that I work with as a brand ambassador are there any other professional projects you have lined up outside of music so I think those, those and, and things, Blossom yes and Blossom I think the, the endorsements would be the, the other side of And looking back again, what would you say are your career highlights? My career highlights, uh, <laughs> well definitely it would have to be the moment I sang uh, with Coldplay uh, in New York 2021, September, don't forget, 20, 25th, <laughs> 25th September 2021 and of course in that very year um, I got married, it might not be like a career thing but of course that, that's also been quite a highlight but ministry wise definitely that has to top um, the list yeah Okay, you, I'm sure you've been asked this already, but since you mentioned Coldplay, <laughs> that moment when he was like, um, when Chris Martin was like, oh, this is the Beyonce of Zambia, what was going through your head? I was like, whoa! <laughs> I think the only thing that, firstly, I, so much was going on, you know, in my head because I was so nervous. That's, I think, the largest crowd um, thus far that I have had to sing for. So I was almost even oblivious to what he was saying until I watched, you know, the video. But really in that moment, like he said, he said he would, he would introduce anybody like that because he always wants people to feel um, comfortable. And so it made me feel a little more comfortable. But of course, yeah, I'm just a chungu. <laughs> Okay, and speaking of nerves, like what tricks do you have to deal with the nerves you get on stage? Okay, so I'm always nervous and it's always, it's always a new thing, funny enough. For me, like I would never really, and I, I don't think I'll ever find myself being used to the stage. Uh, even if it's just two people in the audience or 70,000 people like, you know, uh, it was in New York. I think I'll always get nervous. But one of the things that really helped me, of course, has to be prayer. So um, I pray. I have a moment of just, you know, 
being in alignment with myself as well and just taking in the the moment because in this field that we're in sometimes things are a little too quick like da, 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 you know you're on tour you're singing for people and you don't find yourself living in the moment so i always also tell myself enjoy this moment i think that helps me calm my nerves and just be present on stage if you woke up tomorrow and found that you lost your voice what career would you pursue yikes first of all god please don't do that to me <laughs> um, i think the the career i would uh, pursue would definitely law i still struggle even now like i really want to know to, to pursue that side of, of my life i always loved law i fell in love with it since i was in i think sixth grade uh, or, or something like that and it's, it's a passion that I feel if fueled and you know if um, brought to life I'll do really well in if I do say so myself so I definitely would focus on you know, the low side. You can add that to your list of goals. Sorry? You can add that to the yes, list of your goals yes, for the coming years. <laughs> <laughs> what are the pros and cons of being married to another musician? Okay so the pros uh, maybe I would say top three the pros would be that we we understand each other because we understand the field that we're in. So we understand each other's time, you know, and scheduling and whatnot um, because we both uh, are in the industry. And, you know, you get to do things with your best friend, you know, your husband, you know, you get to sing together, um, like, like in the case of um, Mr. Netando and I, Chaka Pompey. We get to have moments where we're on the same stage, and you know those are those are memories being made. And three would be you get to to share advice, you know. And for for like him, because he went before me, uh, I get a lot of advice for him from him. He's kind of like my mentor as well, so I really love that side that you know I can implement what he implements as well in, in, in his career. The cons. <laughs> would be uh, the scheduling once again and especially that we are parents now so we have to have that balance of you know being present at home and also um, with our with our careers so just understanding you know what phase what journey point we're in I think that helps but otherwise the scheduling again because both of you might not be home uh, if, if not well well uh, balanced number two would be hmm Artists, we are weird. We're weird people, you know. So, so, so his weirdness and my weirdness find each other. <laughs> and so, if you don't really uh, pay attention to the little things, because it's always the little things, um, it can explode. But of course, be very intentional about those spaces. And three, con. Mm, I, I I don't know what I would what I would. Let's see. I think I would add. The fact that as creatives, because we're in the creative space, we need personal space. So now balancing that, um, you know, understanding that, oh, Chaka is in a space where no, he's, he's creating now. I need to understand that and I need to give him that space. Balancing that. I think that those would be the, the three cons that I would place. But otherwise, I love the journey. <laughs> you described yourself as weird. What's the weirdest thing about you? <laughs> the weirdest thing about me, I would say, would be... Mm. Okay, I, I can't call it weird, but it's a very interesting laugh. I have a very interesting laugh. <laughs> like my laughter is quite... <laughs> it's quite something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what misconceptions do people have about you and what's the craziest rumor you've heard about yourself? What misconceptions do people have about me? I think I would say that maybe that I never get angry. Of course, you know, we're all human. We all have, you know, spaces and fuses that, that make us angry. And naturally, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bubbly person. I'm a joyful person. I love to laugh. I love to be happy, like genuinely, you know, even away from uh, being an artist, I genuinely just love to have a good time with people. But also, <laughs> the very same, you know, uh, Passion that's there during the, the the laughing, you know, can 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 come out in in anger sometimes. And of course, you need to know how to to have self control because that's very very important. So I think maybe that's the 
misconception because some, some, I usually hear like, oh, that's not, I've never seen Esther angry, I've never seen Esther angry. She does get angry, you know, but um, you just know how to, how to handle those moments. Yeah, and I think the wildest rumor I've heard, I've heard, I think would be, would be the, the, the millionaire tag. I saw something on YouTube that was going around. I'm like, dear, I wish this was, you know, balanced with reality. <laughs> I saw some girl like, oh, Esther is, Esther is not worth it. No, no, we speak, we speak life into that. We speak life. We shall, we shall, we shall make it. Speak it into existence. Speak it into existence. <laughs> What's something that surprises people about you? I think people get surprised by the fact that, you know, in as much as, because there's there's this personality, you know, like for, for, for those of us who are always kind of like joyful and bubbly, uh, some people would think we, we, we don't have, you know, those boundaries. I think people get surprised sometimes when uh, somehow they would expect you to say yes to something and then you politely, you know, say no. So I think maybe the boundary side is something that maybe people get surprised by. And I'm getting better by the day because I really used to find it very hard to say no. But yeah, so maybe people who knew me before like get surprised by how no's are coming in now a little more. <laughs> <laughs> no, I need to learn that one. <laughs> when was the last time you cried tears of joy? Ooh, when was the last time I cried tears of joy? It would definitely be uh, a time I was uh, playing with uh, my son Malakai Chimwemu and I think moments, moments, especially as he's growing, just make me so emotional. I'm already an emotional human being, and so whenever he smiles back at me, you know, he he, he makes some some sounds, and he's intentional about maybe doing something that I will see, and oh, that gives me so much joy. So sometimes I do find myself crying. What have you learned about yourself since becoming a mother? Yes. Okay. So I have learned that I can wake up in the middle of the night just by hearing a little baby's sound. You know, I never, I never thought I would be able to do that. So I've learned that I've actually, actually have the capacity to do that. What pregnancy cravings did you have? All right. So what pregnancy uh, cravings did I have? So generally. Funny enough, I didn't really have cravings. Like it wasn't like that, you know, midnight thing where I told my husband, oh, I need uh, this particular thing. But I found myself craving for mangoes and it was not the season for mangoes. <laughs> so that was quite funny. But I did have my, my sister-in-law had, had mangoes at home that she froze. So she, she gave them to me, which was very kind of her. And yeah, that was practically it. I really wanted mangoes, yeah. What song always reminds you of your childhood? or songs, song or songs? Song or songs, I think it would have to be, the top two would be That's by um, our living legend, Jen Osborne, featuring Danny Kaya. And it was, I think, one of my favorite songs growing up. I just love how <laughs> the video was and, and whatnot. I think the other song would have to be um, we shall fight and conquer hate. Wow. We shall fight and conquer hate. In the name of great Africa, we shall fight and conquer hate. I think that was by President Kaunda, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think I heard something. So every time I hear something like that, I remember. I've never heard it sound like that. That's <laughs> <laughs> good. <laughs> And speaking of songs, um, if you were to dedicate a song to your son, which one would you choose? Ooh, I love that question. Um, does it have to be my song? Um, it doesn't have to be your it song. Or maybe, song. I don't know, one of yours and one of my songs. One of okay. somebody else's. So, one of my songs, I think I would dedicate Love Letter to him. Uh, Love Letter is in my debut album, Movanga. And it was actually written by my friend Amory. And it just reminds you of, you know, what God says about you. And I think I would really love him to grow up knowing that. And you know that the Bible is somewhat a love letter from God for us. And a song by another person, I think it would have to be uh, Simi. The do do ke, do do ke. She actually sang that for her child, so I would, I would dedicate that to my son as well. What is something you've tried that you will never do again? Without even thinking twice, 
combined jam print. <laughs> so I did a, I don't know what it's called, but by the Twin Towers in Soweto, I would never do it again. I would never do it again. And you know, my, my, my husband convinced me to do that. And then he even wanted me to actually bungee jump at Victoria Falls, because that one is even way longer. I, you know, humbly, no. <laughs> And what are your favorite travel destinations in Zambia? My favorite travel uh, destinations in Zambia would definitely have to be Livingstone. I, I, I will never get tired of the big falls. I will never get tired of you know being in that space. Um, I love the Lower Zambezi as well. The only thing is that I love I love wildlife, but I'm always scared, so I never really get to. I fully enjoy because I'm always very skeptical about my movements and whatnot. Uh, but overall, I really, really love um, those two. I'm yet to go to Fuwe. I have heard a lot of beautiful things about Fuwe, so hopefully this year I get to go. And actually, you just mentioned Soweto. So, what are your favorite travel destinations outside of Zambia? Also. My favorite uh, travel destinations outside Zambia were those that I've been through uh, so far. Definitely Cape Town. Cape Town, like, is, is, is up there. And um, Joburg as well. There's quite a lot to see, you know, the streets of Nelson Mandela that he grew up on. Uh, of course, the, the, the Twin Towers, the towers at the, I think, Soweto. And what else? I really, really enjoyed... Um, I enjoyed my time in China as well, funny enough. Uh, it might not be like a tourist attraction. Like, like you're not going there like to tour per se. But I think it's a, it's a great place to go and just expand your mind. Yeah. What's your most prized personal possession? Honestly speaking, I'd have to say my wedding ring. And I love it very much. Show us. Oh, uh, Flash it. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby, shampoo. <laughs> We've seen it in the video, but sure. we haven't seen it in real life. <laughs> Describe your perfect day or weekend off. A perfect day or weekend off would have to be, first of all, electricity. <laughs> first of all, having power at home, um, watching some movies, having nice food, and the weather being more on the cold side. I really love the cold weather. So it's not raining, it's not sunny, it's just really nice and um, a little chilly. I think, I, I, I think that's a perfect day for me. And when you're home and there's Zesco, what TV shows are you watching? When I'm home, um, TV shows, well definitely, well I just finished it, but I loved the Squid Game Challenge. I don't know if you guys have watched it. Um, Right now, I'm watching a reality show called um, Trust, a game of greed, and it just shows how greedy we can be as, as, as humans. You know, in as much as we want to be like kind and sharing, sometimes the first instinct is to, to save what's mine, and if I can have more, then I'm going to, you know, uh, um, push somebody over. You know, like, it just shows like the human the human mind and how crazy we can be sometimes. So I like I like such reality shows. And also I've been watching finally I started Money Heist. <laughs> I, I didn't I didn't watch it when you know the hype was up there but uh, it's it's quite a nice uh, series. Yeah. Who are your favorite Zambian musicians of all time? My favorite Zambian musicians of all time, of course, number one would have to be the African Eagle. I'm genuinely a big fan. Uh, that's Pompey for those who don't know, you know, he's, um, yeah, he's that line. But I would also add, so that's Zambian music all around. I really, really loved Daddy Zimas. I really loved him. I loved um, Angela Nirenda. I love her music. Um, the Moale sisters. Uh, oh, those are not. Those are not two. But can I just like mention? Yeah, yeah. I think those uh, definitely Map Forty Four, Abo Chungu. Um, who else? Of all time, I love Piquet Shell as well. I feel like he was a really great uh, storyteller. That man, and you know, we can learn from his music even even now. 
and there was a time I was really, really obsessed with Mpongozi. Yeah, and one of my favorite songs, maybe my young brother knows, is a song called, I think it's Suicide, <laughs> by Pongozi. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna expand that question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Favorite African musicians of all time as well. Okay, so if we go to Africa in general, I would say I really, really love um, Sir Richard Bonner. Like he's African. I don't, he, I don't think he lives here anymore, but I love him. I love um, Ada from Nigeria. I love Mercy. Uh, Mercy Chinu as well from Nigeria. I absolutely love, 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 love Mafiki Zolo. I really love their music. I grew up listening to it. And to see, you know, how far they've come and them still being relevant, that's that's really something beautiful. And I definitely love <coughs> I love Saudi Soul. I actually really love Saudi Soul. Yeah. Especially their first project. Yeah, their first few projects. What are the three best pieces of advice you've ever received? Okay, so the three best pieces of advice I've ever received would be one from my mom. She told me the the the, the easiest way to clean the kitchen is to is to clean it while you're cooking. You know, at least by the time you're done cooking, it won't be as hectic as would have been if you were not cleaning along the way. And I've taken that. She told me every time I uh, you you. Every time you, you cook in Shima, always clean the, the stick, the cooking stick, there and then, because of course it won't be hard. And that's, that's a habit that I've grown up with. No matter what, even if I end up not washing the plate there and then, I'll wash the, the cooking stick. The second piece of advice would be uh, something I got from my sister-in-law. She, she's actually Chaka's cousin, and she lives in SA. And she said, if you if you live by their tears, you die by their booze, you know. And that I really resonated with that, especially in this uh, the the space of of work that we're in. You know, sometimes you can get a little crazy. So just always remembering to stay level-headed, to to remember why you're doing what you're doing. You know, life will always be life. People will always be people. But if you live by you know them um, liking you and you know cheering you. Death, the day they, they boo you, you might lose yourself, you know, because your identity is what, even what they reflect um, onto you. So if you're comfortable with who you are, you know that you're doing your part, you know that you're doing a great job. I think that, that really helps. So that's some advice that I've really, really um, taken with both hands. And the last one would be, you know, it's never too, too early to start investing, to start thinking about the future financially. You know, that's something we don't really have in our culture. And I think it's a very, very important attribute because whether we like it or not, as long as we're still alive, five years will come, 10 years will come. It's not a, oh, maybe we'll reach five years, you know, but as long as we're still breathing, time will, will happen. So whatever it is you can do now to make sure that your future self um, appreciates you, you know, on the financial side, please do it. And what are some bad pieces of advice you've received? <laughs> so the bad pieces of advice I've received, I think I would say the top three would be, okay, I'll start with the, with the not so serious one, that I can sleep with my makeup on. <laughs> Dear ladies, get it from me? <laughs> I learned the hard way. You know, sometimes you, 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 you've you done your makeup and maybe you have something tomorrow as well and you're thinking, oh, let me, let me just keep it on. No matter what, please just remove that makeup. I really learned the hard way. Um, the second one would be that my, like, you know what, at the end of the day, your feelings are what matter. I think that takes away from us always, always considering others and we somewhat end up becoming selfish without even realizing. Yes, we, we need to also, you know, care for our feelings. But I love what uh, C.S. Lewis said when he said, humility is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less, you know. So I will now think more of my neighbor and, you know, of myself less. Not that I'm thinking less of myself. And I think that has really helped even in the everyday decisions, because I know that it will affect somebody 
out there some in, in, in one way or the other and so definitely bringing out advice where you know it's, it's all about you and you know what you what you feel is what matters the most I think that somewhat brings uh, a space of selfishness and the third one would definitely be the advice that has to do with um, <laughs> with marriage, I think I didn't even I didn't even take that advice. You know the advice where you know um, what and I and like I humbly say it like but it's like it's my, it's my from my point of view humbly. Um, what is mine is mine. What is his is ours. I, I I think that's a very unfair way of entering a marriage. You know, if at all whatever it is that you have, place it on the table. As, you know, both of you. You know, I don't think it's fair for just the woman to get everything, you know, and the man to just... We get it, he's the provider, you know, don't get me wrong. He's the provider, we're the helpers. However, you know, we, it, it's very, it's kind of selfish for us to say, you know, everything here is mine, but what, whatever it is that, you know, my husband has is for both of us. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, thank you, please. <laughs> <laughs>